participation. Uh, this um, uh, briefing uh, is our post-election briefing to discuss uh, a couple of things. One, to get an analysis uh, on what actually happened, looking at race, gender, and actually also age. Um, and we will hear from Dr. Um, Avis Jones DeWeaver, with Inside President of Inside Unlimited, who's the senior policy advisor, uh, and also senior policy advisor for Black Women's Roundtable. Uh, then, following uh, Avis, we will have a kind of a um, analysis about what actually happened. What what were the the victories for women uh, from a national perspective, as well as a state-based perspective? Um, and we will hear from uh, <coughs> Dr. Elsie Scott. Uh, who is the founding director of the Ronald W. Walters Leadership and Public Policy Center at Howard University to give that national kind of lens look along with um, uh, state-based uh, leaders from Florida and Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, and Alabama. Uh, we may have one or two others that may have joined us. We may add them as well. And uh, those state leaders are Solange Denton, convener of Florida uh, Black Women's Roundtable, Florida Coalition on Black Civic Participation, who is also state community organizer of the AFL-CIO. Following her, Helen Butler, executive director of the Georgia Coalition for the People's Agenda, who also leads our Georgia Black Women's Roundtable. Alyssa Canty, who's our state coordinator for North Carolina Black Youth Vote, and HBC, HBCU coordinator for Common Cause. P.D. Talley, convener of the Ohio Unity Coalition, Secretary Treasurer, Ohio AFL-CIO. Uh, Honorable Sheila Tyson, convener of the Alabama Black Women's Roundtable and Council Member of Birmingham City Council. And closing that component would be Carol Joyner, Director, Labor Project for Working Families, Family Values at Work. And then I'll uh, introduce the, uh, the third um, 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 presentation uh, after the race and gender analysis and the national state-based election victories. So this time I'm going to turn it over to Elsie Scott, and I ask anyone that's on the phone to please uh, keep your phones on mute until it's your opportunity, if you are a presenter, to, to uh, present. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Avis Jones to read. Hi, this is Dr. Avis Jones to Weaver. Uh, we're looking at the uh, CNN exit polls uh, to get an in a sense of who voted, how they voted, and how this election really broke. And any analysis of that data shows without any sort of uh, equivocation whatsoever that this was a race that was decided on the basis of race. Uh, if you look at who voted for whom, uh, Donald Trump was able to energize the white electorate and he won based on the white electorate and the white electorate alone. Whites voted for Donald Trump across the board across every stratification that you can imagine, across gender, across education, across age, across income level. He carried whites and nobody else. Every other racial group voted against this candidate. So this is a, a, a race that where one can say without any sort of uh, equivocation whatsoever that race trumped gender and everything else uh, in terms of who made their decisions uh, on election day. Uh, looking down into that a little bit more deeply, uh, it's important to note uh, that uh, this was an election, obviously, in which we had the opportunity to elect the first woman as President of the United States. Uh, and even with that potentially historical outcome, we see that although uh, uh, Clinton carried women generally, um, the reason why she carried women was completely based on the voting power of women of color. When you look at uh, the voting habits or who women voted for across race, we see that uh, base she carried white, uh, Trump carried white women and lost all other women of color. Um, specifically, Trump carried white women uh, by 53%. Uh, and he lost every other category. But when we look specifically at what w women voted for, uh, for, uh, for Hillary Clinton, we see that uh, black women led the way. 94% uh, voted for Clinton. 
58% of Latinas uh, voted for Clinton, and we know that she also carried uh, Asian women voters. So it really was uh, women of color versus white women in this election. Uh, we know, too, that when you look at this issue uh, stratified by uh, college versus non-college grads, throughout the entire election cycle, uh, we kept hearing about these quote-unquote working-class whites, and we kept hearing about these whites that had a high school education or less, uh, with the assumption going into the election that this was Trump's stronghold, but he would ultimately lose college-educated whites. Uh, that ended up not being the case. He carried both uh, college graduates who were white as well as non-college graduates who were white. All um, people of color, whether or not they were college graduate or non-degree holding, all voted for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, we know, too, that when we look at this issue of age, uh, we've been getting a lot of, that's been getting a lot of tension in the media, particularly as it relates to the millennial vote. Uh, there is a